Welcome, everyone, to the Let's Talk ICP podcast. We have a very special guest today, uh, the founding president of the Shiku Metaverse Foundation. Uh, it's a non-profitable Swiss foundation. It's uh, Julien. Uh, Julien holds a, a master's degree in quantum, uh, quantum physics and PhD in monetary economics from ETH Zurich. Thank you for your presence today, uh, Julien. Thank you, Javier. Thank you for the invitation. Awesome. Uh, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your, your story, your starting working in, in Shiku before, uh, where are you from, uh, your background, experiences, your hobbies? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So my name is Yudin and uh, I'm originally from China and I um, came to Europe in 2008. I first went to France for my bachelor's study in physics. And then in 2010, I finished my bachelor study and I was wondering where to go. And I thought, okay, uh, since I was studying physics, why don't I check um, where did Albert Einstein did his study? So <laughs> that was, um, you know, to be honest, my first time that I, I knew um, ETH. ETH, very prestigious university, but I never heard of this before. So I checked Albert Einstein, he did his study here at ETH. So I came here to ETH in Zurich for my uh, master's study in quantum computation and quantum information. And uh, after my master's study, um, I continued my study at ETH uh, in monetary theory and uh, monetary policy. Um, in 2016, I finished my PhD study and I continued my uh, research first as postdoc and then as a visiting scholar in some central banks. And then in 2018, um, so there was um, um, a, 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 a startup, it's um, Definitive Foundation. At that time, the headquarter was still in Silicon Valley. Now it's in Zurich. So um, I got some messages from them. First, I first you know all these messages I went to my spam email, and then this guy, the HR, uh, I think it was Blair, he wrote me on LinkedIn, and then he said, "Hey, I've been contacting you for a long time. Uh, will you have time for a call?" Um, and at that time, I had a very good career in academia or in central banks. I never thought about working in industry, right? But I was doing research. I've been doing research on uh, crypto since 2015. Um, so at that time, I, I told the Defini guy, I said, um, uh, yeah, it's very interesting, but I never thought about this. So maybe no, just, you know, save your time. And then Blair, uh, he was smart. He said, Hey, have you been to US? I said yes, but have you been to California? I said never. They said, hey, why don't you come here? You know, two weeks, just free. Think about this as a trip. So then I flew to uh, Silicon Valley, and then I met a team, uh, a amazing team. So uh, I changed my mind. You know, on my flight back to Zurich, I think yes, this is a great team. I think I want to to join them. So that's how I switched from academia or central banking to, to industry. And then I was um, doing economic research at Definity for two and a half years so, uh, from 2018 until 2020, uh, the summer 2020. So my major role was um, uh, doing research on token tokenomics, uh, decentralized exchange, gas fee model, and also decentralized governance for, for Definity. And then one year before the launch of Definity, uh, my night, I left Definity, and then um, at the time I was uh, there were some projects who wanted me to be their chief economist, but then I got an offer from Bosch Finance, and uh, I have more freedom at Bosch Finance, so and also more support. So then I decided to join Bosch Finance uh, in the summer of 2020, and um, so in the first half year I was thinking what to do. So I did still I was doing some tokenomic service, consulting service for, for first liquidity. It's a stable coin project on, on Ethereum. And then for origin and also some other uh, project on um, ICP, for example, district by the de decentralized LinkedIn and Twitter. 
And then um, in the second half of 2021, I started to think about what kind of projects I can build by myself, right? So um, I first set up a team in Shanghai, um, you know, mostly tech team with a lot of developers. And then also a team here in Zurich. And I got a lot of support from the, the Boxer group. And at that time we did a lot of research and we decided to do Metaverse because we believe that Metaverse is the, the next big thing. But of course it's very difficult, right? It's not like an NFT project or NFT marketplace, it's relatively easy. Metaverse, um, so far, there, there are only two big tech giants, um, big players in this uh, ecosystem. It's the Decentraland and Sandbox, but they're very early stage. And there are also a lot of things that can be improved. So uh, we decided to, to do Metaverse and we spent a lot of effort in setting up a legal structure in Switzerland. Uh, and the foundation has a very good reputation in Switzerland. So we decided to, to make um, uh, a, a foundation for, for the Shiku. Uh, by the way, the, the name of our Metaverse is called the Shiku. So um, yes, so in 2021, um, we decided to do the Shiku Metaverse and took us like half a year to set up the legal structure. So Shiku Metaverse was officially set up um, in 2022. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is an amazing story uh, from the beginning when you started in, yeah, first in the central banks and another big corporations and then change your mind in your trip to, to uh, Cali uh, California once mm -hmm. you complete the, the Definity team and then you start to be involved in, in the blockchain in the industry uh, and then now in, in Zurich. I love uh, the area because it's like the crypto valley, right? It's Zurich yeah. uh, is becoming a global hub uh, of blockchain. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of talent, a lot of people working on the same direction uh, the Finity, yeah. Bustler Group, Origin. Yeah. Could, could you tell us a little bit more about these collaborations? Because now you, you are focusing on, on Shiku Metaverse, and then we can yeah. explain a little bit more what is Shiku, what is the Metaverse, what is the, the vision of, of the, this Metaverse, and what is unique. Mm -hmm. But first, uh, I would like to dig in more about the, um, the relation, right, and the partnership or collaboration that you have in, in this ecosystem between Origin, Bustler, mm -hmm. uh, Definitely, yeah. internet computer, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so when people check my background, they, they are very confused. Hey, Yulin, what is your background? What are you doing? It's so confusing. Um, me, myself, I like uh, challenges. So um, I first did, you know, six years study and research of uh, physics, quantum physics, and then I switched to economics. You know, at that time, people ask, hey, why is like to very irrelevant stuff, right? But for me, it's actually quite similar behind. So in quantum physics, we do modeling and simulation of uh, particles. So we study the interaction of these particles and the collectively they form, there's some phenomena. And the same in economics, when you do PhD, you also need to do a lot of mathematics, modeling and simulation. If you think about, you know, in models, it's uh, agnostic. You don't know it's a particle or it's a human. So for me, there are a lot of similarities for economic research and uh, physics um, uh, research. Mm -hmm. And then later on, when I switched from, um, you know, econo while I was doing economic research, I was doing more like a minor theory. Um, and then people ask you, hey, how did you switch from minor theory to crypto economics? So my answer to this is there actually, you see they are very different, but there, were, there are also a lot of similarities. Uh, the, the biggest one is uh, you can think of like a minor theory is I'm designing uh, tokenomics for the whole country. And when I design tokenomics, it's for a crypto project, right? So minor theory is like a tokenomics for, for a whole country. So this is uh, the biggest similarity. And then, uh, so I'm talking about one in, in, in the crypto space. I first started as a, a crypto economist in, um, in Definity and then as an economic advisor in some other project, for, for example, Origin, um, and uh, then Boschel Finance. So I can tell you the, the relation between Boschel Finance and the, all the different companies. You can think of Boschel Finance as an um, incubator or early investor, right? And then so um, Boschel Finance have a lot of different foundation and also have a lot with Origin Foundation. 
uh, and then SQL Metaverse. You can think about SQL Metaverse is incubated by uh, blockchain finance. And uh, because blockchain finance invested and also has a lot of resources, we also spend a lot of effort um, in uh, this whole ICP ecosystem. So naturally, we would like to connect dots. Uh, for example, how to build a synergy between Origin uh, and uh, SQL Metaverse, how to build a synergy uh, between Origin and the Yumi. So Yumi is an empty marketplace. And then on the Yumi empty marketplace, we uh, some of our NFT collections, we adopt the Origin NFT standard. Um, does that make sense? Like uh, how yeah, yeah, yeah. things are connected? Yeah, 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 makes sense, yeah. Uh, like and, yeah. incubator. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Sponsor Group is more like a crypto investors and bring a lot of resource, not only in capital, but also resource to this ICP ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so we have now we're talking about um, Origin um, and then Yumi is an NFT marketplace. And for Shiku, Shiku is a metaverse and everything on Shiku metaverse will be in the form of NFT, for example, land. So for, for Shiku, we are building the first planet. And the first planet has in total 100 land parcels. So every land parcel is an NFT. And um, on the land, we are building some architectures, right? And also you have avatars working on the land and the avatars, they have heads, they have clothes, they have shoes. And you could also build like a, um, a trees or a park and all these items, they are in the form of NFT. So we need an NFT marketplace. And that's the uh, the Yumi. The, the role of Yumi is a strategy partner for Shiku because all the uh, items on, on the Shiku metaverse will be tradable on Shiku. Uh -huh. uh, oh, sorry, on Yumi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what, what is the idea behind the uh, Shiku metaverse? For sure, we have uh, now starting to have more, more metaverse uh, projects. Uh, why do you think uh, Shiku is a little bit more different? What is your vision as, as a founder? Uh, mm -hmm. What are you thinking uh, about your idea uh, about um, Shiku? Not, not only now, yeah. for the next maybe 10 years, or what, what is your, your vision, your idea? And what is the services that now is uh, are available on, on, on Shiku? Uh, people can yeah. walk and, and buy clothes. Your idea is to do like a malls and, and uh, video games. And for sure, Shiku, mm -hmm. the metaverse, like even you can buy art and, and all these things, like physical art. What is your... Mm -hmm. your uh, value proposition of the Shiku Metaverse. Yeah. Um, so back in 2021, you know, when we were brainstorming what to do, uh, you know, since the birth of the ICP in May 2021, um, an ICP is super fast, right? And the transaction fee is super low and storage cost is very low. So we were thinking, what would be the best? Uh, what are the things that we can do on ICP, but not on other blockchains? So, you know, DeFi, you can do DeFi on Ethereum as well, right? And then SocialFi is actually a good thing. That's why um, on ICP, you see a lot of uh, decentralized version of the um, uh, of the apps we use every day, social apps. Like uh, we have decentralized YouTube, decentralized TikTok, decentralized LinkedIn, decentralized Twitter, decentralized Reddit. There's always a decentralized version of the social apps on, on uh, ICP. So this is a good, what, good thing, but we figure out that this is too crowded. We want to do something that is different. And at that time, I think Facebook renamed itself as Meta. So Facebook was building Meta, and the, but it's not a real Metaverse, um, strictly speaking. Because for me, Metaverse uh, needs to be built on the blockchain. And you, you need to give the data, the ownership of the data back to the users. So before the birth of the blockchain, I identify the, the economy as a platform economy. As a creator, you know, you upload your data, your video um, on these platforms, and then you don't own this data anymore. It's the platforms who own your, your data. And then how do these platforms earn money? They get money from advertisers, and they split only maybe a small portion and give to the creators. So the uh, majority of the, of the revenue flow to the to the, to the platform. And you as a user, uh, I mean, even you are Donald Trump, you don't really own your data, right? Treat the delete the Donald Trump's account. 
So this is uh, before the birth of the blockchain. It was created. It was pla a platform economy. But uh, ever since we have the blockchain, uh, it creates a possibility, so-called uh, creator economy. You can truly own your data, and um, you don't need a third party or you don't need a platform uh, who share the majority of your revenue. So that's how I identify or how I see uh, the Shiko metaverse. We are different than Meta, you know, built by Facebook, in the sense that we will give the governance, the voting power, to the um, the to the users and creators, and uh, we also uh, give the data ownership to to users and creators. So that's how we differ from from Meta, and how do we differ from uh, Decentraland and the Sandbox? Uh, well, the first Big biggest difference is we are building uh, our metaverse on a better blockchain uh, ICP, so we could put more data on the um, uh, on the blockchain. And with Sandbox and Decentraland, most of the data are still on centralized server. So in that sense, it's uh, I would say it's a uh, uh, metaverse zero point five. It's not a full version of metaverse. Why? Because on Ethereum, the storage cost is super high. If you store one gigabyte data um, on Ethereum for one year would cost you 20 million. Well, it depends on the price of Ether, right? So sometimes it can be even higher. In the bullish market, it can be 70 million. So that's not affordable. You can't expect developers to, to store everything um, on Ethereum. But with ICP, you know, if you store one gigabyte data on um, ICP for one year, it costs only $5. It's comparable to centralized server. So because of, of ICP, we could have a, a better or more decentralized version of metaverse, a true metaverse. Mm -hmm. And also because of ICP, we could uh, have a higher uh, resolution um, a graphic design, you know, it's more immersive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of reasons why it's different compared with the uh, Web 2 metaverse and Web 2.5 meta metaverse yeah. versions. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the centralization, store data, uh, graphics and and much more. Um, my, my my question also is uh, about the new projects that you are working on, not only in Shiku, also about the uh, NFTs uh, mm -hmm. between Yumi uh, and Origin. Uh, what is exactly mm -hmm. these collections? Uh, what is, is what is it about? Tell us more about okay. your project. Um, so. Before I answer this question, I'm sorry, I think I, <laughs> I forgot to, to answer the, the second half of your previous question. What I, do I vision uh, on, on Shiku in the next few years, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, forgot <laughs> one, yeah. I forgot to answer. I, to two, I asked you two or three questions, I forgot the last yeah. one. That's true. Yeah, yeah, what is your vision uh, for the next so Shiku? That, that's very important for us because um, with uh, Metaverse, if you don't have users, it's um, even you have very decentralized Metaverse, if people don't have fun, people don't come here, uh, it doesn't make sense, right? So um, we are now building one thing and uh, we are also very grateful to Defini Foundation. We got a grant support from Defini Foundation. So we are building a tool that allows architects, you know, like in, um, we have now in the world, there are more than like three million architects. So we are building a tool that allow architects to upload their 3D models on the Shiku metaverse. So I briefly mentioned before that we have, we are building the first planet On the first planet, there'll be 100 land parcels, right? But once you own a land, you can build something on a land parcel. So what you could do is you could buy the NFT uh, or the architect that is in the form of NFT uploaded by architects in from the real world, and um, so this is um, this is uh, one way how we connect with uh, with Yumi, um, because you could uh, you know as if you own the land you could go to Yumi NFT marketplace and check what kind of buildings there are, and you can choose some and then build and deploy on your on your platform. So that's one thing we are doing, how we connect to architects in the real world. We are building this tool to enable them to upload their 3D models and then sell their product. Because you know, for these architects, they might have 10, 15, a lot of 3D models, but it's not implemented in the real world. But they can be implemented in the Shiku metaverse and that's you, they can earn some revenue. And the second thing we are doing now is um, uh, game fight. So we want people to come here, play games, and then earn some stuff. Um, well, this is uh, you know some people say, hey, games, that's that's um, that's um, 
that sounds like uh, not so serious, right? But actually, we human, we learn things by playing games. Uh, so by game five, it's not necessarily just, you know, some simple shooting stuff. It can be, you know, uh, sort of like learn five. By playing some games, you learn some stuff and you also earn. So we, we use tokens to incentivize people to, to, to learn. And um, one uh, relevant stuff is um, I'm now building a so-called university on Shiku Metaverse, Metaverse University, Metaversity, with some professors from very top universities. So we will build um, psychological uh, experiments and students all over the world, they could participate and earn tokens. And by doing so, university professors, they collect data, you know, to for their research. So it's a win for students who come here and then play and, uh, and learn um, uh, game theory and also earn tokens and university professor can do research. And for us, we get a lot of users. So this is an example, you know, it's, um, it's uh, like a hybrid of game fight and a learn fight. And the third thing we are doing is a social fight, but the good thing about uh, blockchain is the composability. So we don't need to do everything by ourselves. We can uh, open our SDK, our API to other, you know, social fight applications, like I mentioned before, like a district, the decentralized LinkedIn, decentralized Twitter and decentralized Reddit. There'll be a portal to, you know, connect to all these, um, all these uh, social apps. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, the whole team is working on. Uh, we target to launch this by end of this year to have this game file, learn file, and social file, and also the, the 3D model uh, tool for, for architects. That's amazing. That's, that's yeah, incredible. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like um, a lot of good ideas. Yeah, the metaversity thing, uh, the 3D model. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally disruptive. Uh, yeah, that's and, and now it's already deployed or, or is uh so we are working on the architect and game five we have uh three games uh as an example. Mm -hmm. Um so now we have only the very preliminary version and we are still working on it. And later on my two colleagues that will show you what we have achieved. So mm -hmm. uh we are making progress really fast. So every six weeks we have a new version. Um, so every six weeks, we will release some new demo or videos to share with our uh, potential users. Uh -huh. And uh, now, for example, if I would like to buy like a parcel, uh, mm -hmm. is available on the Shiku Metaverse or, or, yeah. not, or when it's going to be launched? Yeah, so that also relates to your question, what is um, what is the um, connection between Yumi and Shiku? So Yumi is our strategy partner. Um, we will do the land parcel Dutch auction on Yumi Metaverse, uh, Yumi NFT Marketplace. So we will start uh, um, from 50,000 ICP per land parcel. So the land is 100 meter by 100 meter. So it's really big land. And uh, we target uh, our clients are mostly like brands, top luxury brands or uh, Web3 projects. So we don't... Uh, you know, encourage speculators to come here and buy land and buy and hold and they want to, we want real builders who want to you know some uh, we have some luxury company they uh, approach us um, because we are the first Swiss metaverse foundation we provide high resolution realistic style graphics so right. this fits naturally with uh, with um, uh, luxury brands um, so one luxury brand they come to us they say they want to replicate the headquarter and um, so inside that we will show the history of this of their brand and uh, also the products so that people can see their products 360 degrees. And this won't work with the sandbox, you know, the pixel level style uh, graphics that's um, <laughs> that doesn't fit the luxury brands. Sure. Um, so um, this is one example what uh, uh, what our, our target buyers uh, for our land parcels. Um, brands, pro, Web3 projects. So that means our land is you know, 100 meter by 100 meter. So it's big and it's expensive. That's why when we start Dutch auction, we start from 50,000 ICP. And then the price uh, reduces every few minutes until it hits the reserve price, which is around 10,000 ICP. Uh -huh. So yes, you can buy the land. I think from, uh, I think around May, uh, we will conduct the Dutch auction on the Yumi marketplace.
Okay, but the idea first is uh, try to bring uh, brands, uh, big brands, and and web three projects. Um, mm -hmm. When do you think you start to like have the first um, clients or, or the first mm -hmm. users to enter into the metaverse and maybe buy clothes or, or mm -hmm. play video games or go to the meta uh, metaversity and learn things or yeah. use so... the services. The land sale, uh, we, uh, you know, with the ship metaverse, we want to make it fair, open um, to everyone. So we don't want to reserve some lands for ourselves. We will start a land sale in May, and then we will do the Dutch auction, and everyone can come and bid. You can place a bid. If you your bid is higher than others, you will own the land. And there are already some brands that come to me. They, uh, you know, we were reported by some uh, Swiss magazines and newspaper. So some brands that came to us. And I told them, uh, we will start land sale and we will let you know, but uh, you need to do the land auction so that it's fair to everyone. Mm -hmm. And this will happen in in, uh, in May. And then when it comes to metaversity, so on the first planet, we have 100 land parcels for sale, but we also have some public land, uh, land parcel. And that is for, um, you know, like a charity, for non-profit non uh, organizations, or universities, uh, like the one I mentioned, the metaversity. Uh -huh. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. It's a great project. Yeah, I believe. I'm so excited to, to hear you, uh, the new updates and, and the launch for, for May. That's that's amazing. Um, and then, yeah, I would like to talk also with other projects that you is astonishing uh, you have in mind. It's about the real stable coin. Uh, what is this, Yulin? Uh, you can buy gold, mint gold as an NFT, use this NFT gold as a collateral stable coin. That's crazy. Please give us more details about this amazing uh, news. So, um, you know, like on, on Definity, um, we don't have a real stable coin, right? <laughs> um, because the DeFi uh, infrastructure on Definity, it's still very beginning. So, it will take some time for people to build DeFi and stablecoin. And for stablecoin, the key component is the trust. You have to trust that you have users. So for Definity, we need to have more and more DeFi applications and also a real stablecoin. Um, but if you look at like a stablecoin uh, on Ethereum or on other block blockchains, there are three types. The first type is fiat-backed stablecoin. Uh, you um, deposit one million USD in, in a bank, and then uh, Circle or Tether, they mean 1 million USDT or USDC on the blockchain. And the problem with this is it's uh, centralized, right? And you never know what will happen to the bank, especially after the uh, default of the Silicon Valley Bank. Um, that also occurred, that, that uh, caused the DPEG of the USDC. And the second type is a crypto collateralized um, uh, stablecoin, like a maker or liquidity. So, um, this kind of stable coin, they are more decentralized, but there's always a problem. Um, it's the collateral, collateralization ratio. So you need to be over collateralized. For instance, for Macdo in the early days, 150, and now with the uh, other stable coin as a collateral, it's 120%. Um, but with the USDC as a collateral, you have to trust the uh, the USDC, and the USDC was depegged for a while in the past, right? So again, um, this the um, the second generation of stablecoin or the crypto back stablecoin, uh, it's uh, capital inefficient. Why? Because you need to have one hundred fifty dollars to mint one hundred dollars of stablecoin, and the third type is algorithmic, and it's still I would say a uh, very early stage. Most of the algorithmic stablecoin they do not pack to exactly one dollar, and all these stablecoins they have a problem. They are pegged to U.S. dollar. If you look at the purchasing power of US, US dollar over the last 100 years, uh, the purchasing power 100 years ago was $100. And now the purchasing power is only $3. So over the last, last 100 years, you, are, you have lost 97% of the purchasing power. And uh, um, you know the major central banks, they are targeting 2% inflation rate. So that means if you hold your, your money doing nothing um, over 30 years, Half of your asset is gone, but since the the financial crisis in two thousand eight and the pandemic uh, in two in twenty twenty, 
uh, central banks are accelerating in, in printing money. So that means the inflation uh, is getting higher and higher. In the last year, the US dollar, the US in the US was 10%. And this year, even you know, Federal Reserve tried to increase interest rate to, to uh, suppress the, the inflation rate. The inflation rate is now still around 6%. So with six to 10% of inflation rate, you're losing purchasing power, half of your purchasing power over less than 10 years. So this fiat-backed stablecoin or this USD-packed stablecoin, they are not real stablecoin. They are losing purchasing power. And one <laughs> thing that is uh, 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 gaining um, value is uh, gold. Gold is widely recognized by almost everywhere in the world over thousands of years. So why not gold-backed stablecoin, right? I think on, on Definity, we need a gold-backed stablecoin. And this is something Yumi uh, has been working on. And uh, Yumi is our strategy partner. So I don't have too much information about this. I just know that they will launch the gold NFT uh, in the next few weeks. And then with the gold NFT, I think you can do a lot. It's not only a store of value, it's um it can also be used as collateral in other DeFi, and it can also be used to uh to do some stablecoin. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing! Yeah, we are uh, good news. We are looking forward to to hear more about the UB, uh, gold stablecoin. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, just for like the, the last question, what is the next milestones for 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 Shiku? The what is the the team now? It's like how many people working with you, and if you, if you expect mm -hmm. to grow your team for the for the next months, next years. Yeah, so uh, for Shiku, we have we have uh, so the headquarter is in Marshall. We are based in Switzerland, but we have people globally distributed. Uh, we have um, people in Neuchâtel, we have a marketing team there, and then in Zurich, we have BD marketing and also the uh, uh, some small tech team here, and we also have team in China. So we are globally distributed, and we have around 50 people. Mm -hmm. 50 people? Okay. Yeah, five zero working full-time for, uh, for Shiku Metaverse. Uh -huh. Awesome, great. Um, yeah, that's all. Thank you so much, Yulin, for, for your time today. Uh, Yulin, yeah, the founder president of uh, Shiku Metaverse Foundation. We are going to uh, show the demo, the demonstration about the Shiku Metaverse now. Uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting. You can check the video on the YouTube channel, the Let's Talk ICP YouTube channel, to see, to see more information about the, the Shiku Metaverse. Thanks a lot. Uh, you want to Thank you, Javier. Any like the last words or something more for the audience, for the IC, let's talk ICP audience, Yulin? Um, yeah, so why not try Yumi, uh, our strategy partner, and um, register an account, and uh, the gold NFT will, will be coming in the next few weeks. And then also try shiku.com, and we are still working on the website. It's not perfect, but uh, we are working on it. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao.